वेलकम टू माय व्यूज एंड न्यूज सम न्यू स्टोरीज फ्रॉम इथियोपिया एंड सूडान फर्स्ट इट सीम्स दैट इथियोपियन नेशनल डिफेंस फोर्स हैज लॉन्च्ड अ मेजर ऑपरेशन अगेंस्ट फानो फाइटर्स नियर एंड इन द आउटस्कर्ट्स ऑफ शोर ऑबिट शोर ऑबिट इज अ मेन टाउन इन द नॉर्थ शोर जोन ऑफ द अमहारा रीजन heavy fighting ongoing these minutes in the outskirts of shore orbit city uh, i reported about uh, the flight of uh, a flight of uh, local government officials from shore orbit in the previous video then we reported about uh, uh, movement of police and militia members to after that reportedly heavy clashes started details for you uh, second viewers uh, turkish drones played a key role in the war in ethiopia before the introduction of turkish drones tigray forces were marching towards addis ababa and tigray leaders were saying there was no one between them and addis ababa then came turkish drones precision strikes it became almost impossible for tigray military convoys to move along main roads and we saw a retreat from afar from north shore oromia special zone of amhara towards makale tigray's capital and if you remember tigrayans across the world uh, protested against turkey that turkey was providing military assistance to ethiopian government that civilians were dying today turkish ambassador was in tigray barak baran was in tigray i want to say a few words about this visit because uh when i criticize the response of tigray archbishops uh, to efforts of mediation by the main church people say sajid you support the church main church you are against independence of tigray orthodox uh, church what i criticize is double standards uh third viewers uh, gambela region of ethiopia where neor and anioch ethnic clashes are now intensifying heavy fighting erupted today reportedly between the two tribes dozens have been killed in this ethnic violence where is ethiopian national defense force is it there uh fourth live your sudan where uh, spla sudan people liberation army abdul aziz al hilo group is trying to take control of kadugli main city in south kordofan spla and sudanese military are fighting on some fronts 30 camps so uh, 10 camps of sudanese military have been captured by spla so far and Uh, some members of sudanese military have joined rapid support forces in al fashir yesterday uh, members of sudanese military from nayala joined rapid support forces or they were taken prisoner today al fashir north dafo firstly viewers uh, shore orbit in several towns of the amhara region small scale clashes are ongoing between fano fighters and ethiopian security forces we try to keep you updated uh, though it's not possible to make videos on each and every confrontation between fano fighters and security forces this confrontation is spread across amhara region now wallo gojam norshowa gondar everywhere in the amhara region in varying degrees there is ongoing uh, fighting between fano fighters and security forces this morning we reported about what happened near gondar city 
just 15 kilometers away from Gonda city, fawn of fighters seized a town. They uh, forced city government to release their comrade who was arrested yesterday. Situation still volatile there. In North Shore zone, we have been seeing a growing instability. In North Shore, Girman Shitila assassinated. In North Shore, Abdul Hussain assassinated. In North Shore, Debre Birhan, police chief assassinated. In North Shore, several attacks on police, on Ethiopian National Defense Force, on police stations, on residences of police officers. Both Oromos Amharas live here. Not sure of it, was Heavy fighting ongoing in a sure of it city. Sure of it is perhaps the most destabilized town in the entire North Shore zone of the Amhara region. Fano fighters are based close to the city, in the outskirts of the city, near Rasa. They have significant patterns. So the military has launched some operations near Shower Orbit, but it could not completely eliminate uh, Fano fighters from this area. Then military tried to engage uh, the people. I remember what Radassi visited uh, Shower Orbit a few weeks ago. He held a meeting with locals. And two days ago, meeting between Ethiopian National Defense Force officers and Shower Orbit locals. But still, Fano fighters are getting support from the people. That is why they're surviving. They're able to carry out attacks. And uh, this morning we reported that Shore Orbit mayor, government officials, police, militia members, they fled. Most sources confirming that city government is paralyzed. That is why there is already uh, ENDF command post working in Shore Orbit for days, I think. In charge of Shore Orbit security is Ethiopian National Defense Force, not police. Police is working under ENDF because there is temporary command post. Partial curfew was imposed as well in Shore Orbit, if you remember. And some restrictions were lifted a few days ago, but still curfew for specified hours. Now, uh, heavy fighting ongoing in Shore Orbit. Fano fighters have carried out some attacks. A convoy of Ethiopian military was ambushed by Fano fighters in the outskirts of Shore Orbit. Pictures are being shared by some uh, news outlets uh, affiliated with Fano factions. The pictures show two burning vehicles of the Ethiopian National Defense Force. It is being claimed that these vehicles were attacked by Fano fighters in the outskirts of Shore Orbit city. It's difficult to verify or to reject the claim of the Fano fighters because we know that several social media activists, Fano supporters, they keep on sharing false information. Old pictures, videos are being shared too. That is why we have to be very careful. But an ambush by Fano fighters on Ethiopian National Defense Force near Shower Orbit City is being confirmed by locals from the area. Uh, inside town, relative calm, in the outskirts, ongoing fighting, city government paralyzed, Fano fighters attack wherever they want to attack in and around Shore Orbit city. Meanwhile, rumors going around that uh, Debre Birhan, uh, security chief, has resigned. So far, rumors were waiting for some official confirmation. But we know that in Debra Birhan, police chief was assassinated, police commander, around three to four days ago. Now, reportedly, head of security has resigned. If police chief, uh, police chief can be assassinated, obviously other officials can easily be hit. Ethiopian National Defense Force uh, could not protect local government. By the way, who is responsible for the security of local government officials? ENDF is not responsible. I think police is responsible. Police is not in a position to confront Fano fighters. ENDF will have to intervene to provide security to local government officials in North Shore Zone, in Shore Orbit, Debre Birhan. Otherwise, local government, city governments are collapsing gradually, gradually. 
government officials are finding it difficult to work freely because Fano fighters threatening them. They threaten them by phone. They carry out attacks. They throw grenades at their houses, at their vehicles. So how can governments function in such circumstances? ENDF there, ENDF is in short of it, but ENDF failed as well to protect the shore orbit city government officials heavy fighting in shore orbit. Secondly, we are the Turkish ambassador to Ethiopia, Barak Baran was in Tigray too. He met with Tigray interim president Geta Shoreda. He offered to help Tigray in the rebuilding of Tigray infrastructure, in the rebuilding of Al Nijashi Mosque. I think Al Nijashi Mosque was built by Turkey. Uh, it was modernized by Turkey. And the mosque was damaged during the war in Tigray. Ketacho welcome Turkish ambassador. No group protested in Tigray against the visit of Turkish ambassador. No one boycotted Turkish ambassador's visit to Tigray. Getacho was there, uh, Professor Kendea, Getacho's friend was there too. Is it double standards? Patriarch visits Tigray, Tigray archbishops boycott Patriarch's visit. Patriarch is accompanied by other archbishops too. They try to enter a church, doors the church closed on Patriarch. What was the crime committed by the Patriarch and archbishops? Some archbishops, they supported the war on Tigray. That is why uh, Tigray archbishops reacted. Turkey provided drones to Ethiopian government. Drones devastated Tigray forces. And back then, if you remember, Tigray was saying that drones were killing people, that civilians were dying. And if you remember, I was saying that drones were hitting military targets, TPLF leadership. Yes, people were dying in collateral damage. But Tigray people's uh, TPLF's narrative was that drones were being used to massacre civilians. Turkish drones. Turkey supplied drones to Ethiopia. We monitored that. I was one of the first who said that uh, Turkish drones were in operation. I saw their use in Azerbaijan, Armenia war, in Libya war, in Turkey, Syria war. That is why I said that drones being used precisely uh, for hitting targets precisely in uh, Ethiopia were Turkish drones. Later it was confirmed. Turkish drones changed the battlefield picture. Tigray forces forced to retreat from North Shore for etc. So, no problem with a Turkish ambassador's visit to Ethiopia, to Tigray. Warmly welcomed. No one boycotted. No one protested. Isn't it double standard? That if Turkish ambassador can be welcomed, why is that uh, orthodox patriarchs Orthodox Patriarch and Archbishops cannot be welcomed by Tigray Archbishops. What is happening between Tigray Orthodox Church and the main church is political? Or you can say Tigray Archbishops have historical grievances. They always wanted to secede and now they have opportunity to secede. It's not that they are seceding because of statements of some archbishops like Abune Abraham, Abune Petros. Kathacho welcomed uh, the Turkish ambassador who uh, offered uh, to rebuild Nijashi Mosque, uh, which was damaged in the war. Thirdly, viewers, the Gambala region of Ethiopia, where ethnic, clash, ethnic clashes are intensifying. Gambala put an end to an insurgency launched by Gambala Liberation Front fighters uh, through mediation, through dialogue. And this year, the two sides reached uh, an agreement. After that, we saw start of ethnic violence. 
GLF fighters are now part of regional forces. They're not part of this ethnic violence. And after GLF joined regional forces, peace deal signed, we saw that uh, Anioc and uh, Neor tribes uh, uh, were involved in clashes. Several rounds of clashes between them. Just three to four days ago, we reported about an attack by reportedly newer militants on a bus. Uh, Anioc militants on a bus carrying newer reportedly several were killed in that barbaric attack. And after that, today again, heavy fighting resumed between Aniocs and Neors. Ethiopian National Defense Force is deployed in Gambala, but ENDF is unable to stop this fighting in Gambala. Gambala region uh, has faced uh, infiltrations from South Sudan as well. South Sudan's armed fighters enter and carry out attacks on Gambala people. Inside Gambala, fighting between Neors and Aniocs reportedly. GLF regional GLF had uh, Gatwag Bompol and his colleagues accuse Gambala regional government that Gambala regional government is backing Aniox. Uh, that is why Aniox are able to carry out attacks on uh, Neor people. Lastly, we have two new stories from Sudan where SPL is Sudan People Liberation Army led by Abdul Aziz Al Hilo has taken a control of 10 camps of Sudanese army so far in South Kordofan. In South Kordofan, Sudanese military is fighting rapid support forces on one hand, on the other it is fighting SPLA fighters. Too. Reportedly, SPLA fighters want to capture Kadugli, capital of South Kordofan. They captured a place between Kadugli and another town uh, a few days ago. Now they are trying to lay siege to Kadugli. So Sudanese military under pressure in Kordofan too because it is now fighting on two fronts, fighting against RSF and against SPLA. In Darfur, you know what is happening. In Khartoum, Bari Madraman, General Command Headquarter under siege by Rapid Support Force members. And uh, in Darfur, Sudanese Army members joining Rapid Support Forces. CRP joined uh, uh, Rapid Support Forces. From Nayala, uh, some members and officers who the military joined RSF yesterday. And today in Al Fashir, a group of Sudanese uh, Military officials led by a first lieutenant, uh, Abdul Rahman, joined rapid support forces or they were captured by rapid support forces. A video has been shared by RSF showing the Sudanese military officials who have been captured or who have joined rapid support forces in Al Fashir, North Darfur. Watch the video, please. Thank you for watching. <laughs> من الفرقة السادسة مشا الفاشر وبالرس الرسالة لأخواننا الشرفاء في القوات المسلحة ما ضباط الفلول وما ضباط ديك الممعوط لا الشرفاء القوات المسلحة دي فيها شرفاء أنا إحنا بنرسل لهم رسالة بنقول للشرفاء في القوات المسلحة يا أخواننا الديك الممعوط ده انتهى والبتيخ اللي هسي قاعدين اللي موجوه ده ده ما عنده أي فائدة